Hello everyone, welcome back to our farming RPG tutorial series. Today we'll be implementing a complete weather system for our game. But first, we will do some touch-ups to all our major scenes, as well as create a new scene for the town square. Starting with the player's home, we will be using this furniture asset pack by Kenny to make our house interiors more lively. We expanded our living space, added new furniture, and new walls to the house. If you see crooked lighting on models after baking the scene lighting, we have a quick fix for that. Simply find the object model within the project and check the box Generate Light Map UVs. After we finish decorating the scene, we will rebake the mesh and readjust the entry points within the scene. Let's give the inn a new makeover by using this medieval asset pack to touch up the scene. And just like our player home, we repeated the same process, adding more tables, candles, and a fireplace in the inn. Remember that we need to rebake the nav mesh surface and update the NPC locations and entry points after touching up the scenes. Repeat the same process with the Forest and Yodo Ranch scenes, with the new respective assets that match each of them.
Now it's time to create a new scene for the town square. Connecting it to the right side of the town, we shall use this area for festivals and special events. So this will be a plot with party props that only appear when an event is ongoing. With that, let's move on to the weather system. We start by setting up the core weather logic. Creating a new particle system, we adjusted the lifetime, emission, shape, and other various settings to make the particles look like rain. Afterwards, we will clone the rain particles and adjust its appearance and speed to recreate it into the snow. Now on to implementing the code. Let's start by creating a new scriptable object, weather data, which will store different weather types and their probabilities for each season. It shall have an enum that contains all the possible weather values. Let's define arrays for each season's weather probabilities. This way, we can easily adjust the likelihood of different weather types occurring throughout the year. To that end, let's create the weather probability struct that will pair each weather type with its probability value. And then the weather probability arrays can be placed over in weather data. Finally, We'll implement the Weather Manager class. This will be a singleton that tracks today's and tomorrow's weather, computes random weather based on the season probabilities, and updates the weather at 6am on each in-game day. This method, the Compute Weather method, uses a random value and cumulative probability to select a weather type based on the current season. Now that we have the basic weather logic, let's implement the visual effects for weather types. We'll create a weather effect controller that will manage weather particles like rain and snow. How this works is that we first will keep track of the player's position and have the weather effects follow the player. And then the weather particles will be displayed appropriately based on the current weather. And the weather effects should be disabled when they are indoors. We've also added some debug.log to our weather manager so we can verify that it is working correctly. This was when I realized that the colliders of the shop under the new assets that we've introduced are not working as intended. Hence, I adjusted them accordingly, so that we are able to interact with the shops again. Now, let's add a weather forecast feature to our game. We shall create a new television class that inherits from interactable object. Eventually, We'll add more features to the television, such that the player is able to learn recipes and stuff. But for now, this will do. Let's add gameplay mechanics related to weather. First, will automatically water the farmland when it is raining. To do so, we shall add a new method in GameStateManager, rain on land, 
that will run at 6.01 a.m. to update all tilled land tiles as water if it is raining. And for them to work within the scenes, in our land.cs script, we'll add logic to check for rain during the clock update method. We also should restrict the player movement during typhoons because when I'm running through the exit, I get that prompt and I fall through. So we should add restrict the player movement by preventing them from leaving their home. Let's improve our dialogue system by automatically disabling player controls during the dialogue. This will prevent the player from moving when dialogue is displayed, making conversations feel more natural. For debugging, I've also added a feature to skip entire days by holding shift while pressing the right square bracket key. And we have enhanced our weather effects by adding a new heavy snow effect to the weather effect controller and also toning down a little on our normal snow so that it all works out. And now let's make our weather system persist across game states or game saves. So to that end, we'll create a new weather save state struct. And then we'll update our game save state to include info on the weather and modify our save and load methods in game state manager. And then we naturally have to add load weather methods to weather manager. And with that, our weather system is complete. We now have the different weather types for each season, visual rain and snow effects, a TV forecast system, auto watering during the rain, and certain movement restrictions during typhoons, and weather that saves properly between game sessions. And with that, it has come to our attention that when the player picks up an item with an item already in his hand, it does not stack but instead it overwrites whatever the player is holding. This is a bug that we should fix. So, we added an, an additional check in the pickup function of interactable object to move the hand to inventory before picking an item up. There is one last thing to add for our weather system and that is to implement the UI icons into the game. We created Change Weather UI in the UI Manager to display an icon for each respective weather. And with that, we are done. The game looks a lot more polished now, and I hope you've been enjoying this series as much as we have. If you would like to download the project files for this series, they are available for our Silver Tier patrons. Thank you, as always, for your support, and I'll see you next time.